All right, welcome to Coach Zagel's Monday press conference. Coach will make an opening statement, and then we will get a mic from the usual. Coach? Guys, hey, uh, um, you know, first of all, just recapping the game, uh, getting a chance to, to go back and watch it. Uh, really pleased with a lot of the effort uh, that, that our kids played with. Um, in all three phases of the game, um, the great thing about uh, the video is you get a chance to come back and have a chance to correct a lot of things, too. Um, a lot of positives, but a lot of things that we can be a lot better. Uh, special teams, uh, how we function, coaching staff and everybody. Um, obviously, the, the kickoff return for a touchdown, uh, have an opportunity to, to fit that a lot better than we did and, uh, and make a play that uh, doesn't change the momentum in the football game. Defensively, a ton of positives, uh, the way we were able to stop the run. Uh, but there's some, some simple things that, uh, that we can do in alignment assignment uh, to, to get off the field quicker than, uh, than we did. And offensively, uh, although we were efficient in the run game, there's still opportunities for us to be a whole lot better and, and uh, some things in, in the pass game that we can clean up as well. So uh, excited that uh, we got a result that we did. At the same time, we come back in the building on Monday, and it's about how we get better. Uh, the challenge is always going to be uh, how fast we can be as good as we can and, and uh, think our guys had the right mentality coming into the building today and, and going through our, our Monday. Uh, we've got a big test this week, uh, South Carolina, uh, good football team. Uh, you look at uh, how they've played uh, inside the conference uh, already against two quality, really, uh, really quality opponents. Um, you know, for us offensively, uh, we've got to do a great job of running the football and, and being balanced. Uh, defensively, got to control and dominate the line of scrimmage. Special teams will be a huge part in this football game. They've found ways to, to change the game on special teams. We've got to do a great job and, uh, and minimize their, their opportunities and plays there. Uh, I mentioned it uh, earlier, but our crowd has been phenomenal in the two road games. Um, ton of support, ton of people showing up, great energy um, the last couple of weeks. Great opportunity this week uh, with a big football game for, for us being back inside of Neyland Stadium here. Uh, being gone a couple of weeks, uh, can't wait to see that thing uh, packed out and create a, a really good home field advantage. It's a unique opportunity for us fans and as a program to honor one of the greats that has come through here too, uh, Al Wils Wilson uh, on Saturday, uh, being able to recognize him uh, going into the College Football Hall of Fame this year, a uh, day that's designated towards him. Um, just in the short time of me being here, getting an opportunity to know him, uh, his passion and his care for, for this program is real. Uh, his impact as a player obviously was real. Uh, Love nothing more than hearing some of the stories of, of him as a great leader and obviously a great player inside of our program while I was here, uh, listening to a bunch of his teammates in particular as uh, guys came back in spring uh, football. Uh, Might have been around the spring football game and, and uh, just getting a chance to hear those guys. So uh, with that, I'll open it up to questions from you guys. Josh, you've talked a lot about the last 48 hours, obviously, before a game. Uh, what's the origin of that? Is that something that you picked up to emphasize as, as a player or a coach over the years? Where did that come from? I, I just think finishing the process out the right way. Tuesday and Wednesday are, are heavy work days for us. Uh, Thursday's a walk through. Uh, Friday, we pick up the, the speed on the practice field, being engaged. Uh, if you're a two and not getting the rep, being lined up, getting the mental rep, it's impossible to get everybody, every rep with every call on either side of the ball against all the multiple formations or defenses that you're going to see. And so being completely dialed into that process, um, not tight, um, but, but dialed in when it's time to work, um, being on time, doing the right things as far as you know what you look like when we're traveling, um, our meetings at the hotel, being on time for pregame meal, all those things play into uh, keeping the most important thing the most important thing and when you're in the football setting it's football but you didn't pick that up from somewhere else so not every coach says the last 48 hours that's kind of your thing it's been our thing here because we haven't been as consistent as we as <laughs> we need to be and as you point those things out um, that's the, the reality of, of where i think we're at as a program our practice habits have continued to get better we still got to improve there, but um, the last 40 hours have been a point of emphasis for everybody in our program, pointing out some things that weren't right this past week, too. And sorry, one more on that. Where do you see in a game where the, where does it show up that the last 48 was good, and where does it show up the last 48 was bad? It shows up in, in the little things. Some of those are big things that you guys see. Um, drop ball, misprotection. Um, some of them are, are little details that, that you can't tell. You know, hat placement, hands, six inch step the way we communicate on the sidelines. Uh, there's a rhyme and reason behind everything that we're doing in our program. And uh, you know those things play out on game day. 
Justin, the players have been saying that they they believe in what y'all are doing here. They they understand what they can do. The upside of this thing. When, when you see uh, you are a player yourself, when you go out there and have a game, an SEC game where you score 62 points, is that something that can really put off a light bulb for players? Like, if you execute at, at this pace, this is what can happen. The end result of you know the performance on Saturday, you know, the good in all three phases, right? Uh, people, I think paid attention to the offense, but the defense played a outstanding football game too. Um, the result is awesome because of the work that the players have been putting in. Sometimes that's not recognized or seen by fans or um, the TV audience uh, when, when you play a football game. But the process as we continue to, to grow in it should lend itself to more consistent performances. Um, Absolutely, the performance from the other day should create buy-in from our players and trust in, in what we're doing as a, as a football staff and, and everything that we're doing from strength and conditioning to nutrition to, to our on the field, um, you know, calls, playbook, whatever it might be. <coughs> Looking at South Carolina, what are some of the challenges they do offensively uh, and defensively for, for you guys? Uh, on the defensive side of the football, uh, they've been really good uh, up front. Uh, they've created turnovers. Uh, they attack the football. Uh, we got to do a great job of taking care of it the last two weeks. Uh, that's been really important, done a good job. There's things that we pointed out on film where the ball is loose, and, and uh, you got to be ready for a defender to be there, and, and uh, we can be more consistent, better with the football in our hands. Offensively, we got to do a great job of, of dominating the line of scrimmage. I, I think that's going to be critical in this football game, force them into, into third and long situations, and then be able to play really good third down defense. And that can be you know, base four down, or it can be bringing pressure, or it can be drop eight, too. Uh, I didn't think we executed early in the football game the way we're capable of on third down. Ben and Rob. <clears throat> Just what have you seen from Hendon over the last couple of games? Seems like he's really starting to hit a stride, both from an efficiency standpoint and taking care of the football. Has been better taking care of the football with the ball in his hands. Uh, some of our meshes have been better, more consistent. I think that happens is get more time on task together with the same guys. Uh, I think as much as anything, great comfort and understanding of what we're doing. Uh, the tempo, uh, he's been really um, in control of what's going on at the line of scrimmage. Been really good with his eyes, and that's allowed him to, to be really decisive with the football. Uh, was extremely accurate the other day. A lot of that stems from eyes in the right place, seeing things really clearly. That allows you to get your body in the right spot. Coach, this, that's the most we've seen from Ladise Whitehead since he's been here. What, just talk about his performance if you could, <coughs> and what that means from going forward. Yeah, I think maybe a, a week or two ago, I talked about you know a guy that was banged up in the off season was was rehabbing with a strength and conditioning staff, had a really good summer and just has steadily grown throughout training camp in the early part of the season. I think it's a great lesson for guys inside of our program that sometimes things don't happen exactly when you want them to. You continue to, to work, you continue to strain, you continue to, to learn on the field and off the field, and eventually your opportunity is gonna come, and when you get that opportunity, you're gonna be ready for it. I thought he did a really good job uh, the other day of, of pressing the line of scrimmage has the ability to make some guys miss more on, on the back end uh, early in the football game when he was in there, um, but did a really good job in pass protection too. So I like a lot of what we saw from Lanith uh, the other day. Uh, Rick and Brent. Coach Don Evans had a couple touchdowns there in the first quarter. How important just has he been to this team and what it wants to do on offense? And then also, is there any update on Jabari Small? Uh, Tyon uh, continues to grow. Um, you know, did some really good things first week, got nicked up and, and wasn't able to, to go uh, for a week there. I think he continues to grow in, in his understanding. If you watch him at the running back position from the other day, man, he's doing a great job of, of being on his track and pressing the line of scrimmage. And that allows, you know, if you got a double team between your left guard and left tackle to, to press vertically and get on the uh, the second level. And that creates space for the running back when he gets outside. I thought he did a really good job as fronts changed of understanding how things would be blocked and pressing it and you know hit it inside when it was supposed to and when he had an opportunity to bounce it and get to grass, he did a great job there. He made some people miss too, which is really important. It's gonna be important in this ball game too as they load the box, and make, it, make it difficult to run. Coach, two questions about the receivers. 
looked like Bayless was more inside this week. Did you like what you got there? And two, it looked like your rotation was smaller this week at receiver. Was that by design or is that circumstances of the game? A lot of the rotation was just based on circumstances of the game and, and how the game ended up uh, playing out. I uh, believe that we have depth and, and have the ability to play multiple guys at, at multiple spots. Uh, Bayless getting him inside was the opportunity to get him more touches. Thought he did a really good job uh, inside. He did a good job on, on our, our pass game, uh, understanding where he needed to be. Thought he did a good job on a couple option routes and did a really good job with the ball in his hands. Coach, I think Christian Charles started the game, but we didn't see him, I think, on defense after that. What was kind of the reason for, for that? Yeah, I just got, got injured uh, early in the football game. Um, thought he would have the opportunity to return. We decided not to. Um, as the game unfolded, there were a handful of guys that, that uh, you saw early that maybe didn't finish. Um, we'll see where those guys are at as, as we go through the week. And, and second question, with, with Ollie Lane, he got the start I think, against Pittsburgh and, and kind of got back in the starting lineup this week. Kind of, what have you? I think he's getting getting more confident in and in, uh, in being out there and playing uh, more reps. Uh, I think he's playing at a better level too, just fundamentally and technique and, and opportunity on the field typically will lend to, to some growth during game time too, like what we saw this past Saturday. Go to the back with Tim and Matt. Coach uh, Cade Mays was named the offensive line of the week in the SEC. What did you see from him on Saturday? Congratulations to, to Cade. Didn't know that. Um, yeah. It's a guy that, man, is, is playing better and better every single week. And I think from a year ago, just coming in and watching him uh, on video and then watching him in the offseason, a guy that's really reshaped his body, just the ability to bend and play with, uh, you know, great power, uh, functional strength at the offensive line position. I think he's playing his best football right now. Uh, he's been healthy, and uh, he's a guy that's got great understanding. Uh, if, if you're up near the line of scrimmage during practice, you're going to hear him communicating with his guard and sometimes his center. Uh, he's got a great understanding of how all of it uh, plays in together. Coach cleaned up penalties on Saturday, only had two for 20 yards. When it comes specifically to just controlling the pace and the flow of how you want to play, <coughs> how important was that? Penalties change the game, um, typically in a, in a very negative way. <laughs> Uh, when they're on on you, um, it changes the way um, you know the situational calls that you're in, whether it's second and long or, or being in third and long. Advantage to the other side of the football, um, being able to play in rhythm uh, is really important for us as well. Uh, the stress of the tempo, um, obviously, that's not there when you're coming off of a penalty. So you put all those things together. It's important for offensive football. But you look at the past couple of games when we had a, a large amount of penalties, some of that's on, on special teams, some of that's on defense too. And, and um, we were able to play uh, ahead of the chains or on our terms uh, for most of the football uh, game in all three phases. Coach, given Saturday's game and where you are at this point in the season, how does that impact <laughs> your expectations for the rest of the way out? It doesn't. Uh, college football is uh, a game of, of 12 weeks, but it's a one-week season every single week. We'll talk to the football team about that. Um, if you try to compare and contrast scores from week to week, you, uh, none of it's going to make any sense. And it's about your same competitive spirit, um, competitive composure when you get out there. It's about your process leading up to kickoff. If we continue to grow in that, that will lend itself to, to better and better results as we go through the season. And I noticed the or was off of the quarterback depth chart. Is uh, is Hooker actually the one? Uh, Hendon will be the one this week, yes. Adam? At UCF, you coached a team that was undefeated in the regular season. <coughs> These guys did not win much last year. Should a team react differently to winning depending on whether they're used to it or not? They pay attention to the outside noise, positive or negative. Uh, they're letting circumstances, um, you know, control who they are on a daily basis that have no bearing uh, of what's going to happen in a competitive environment. You know, for your, your friends, your family, your girlfriend, your dog, right, they get to talk about what happened the previous week. As a competitor, the tough thing and the great thing is that when you come back in the building, man, it's on to the next one. And the only thing that matters is the next one. So we're only as good as we are next Saturday, 12 o'clock against South Carolina. I think our kids are buying into that. That's why our 
our preparation has gotten better, not where it needs to be, but it's gotten better. And if we're consistent in our growth in that, then we got a chance. Three more, Rob, Eric, and Wes. Coach, I'm not an NFL scout, but you probably don't have the most talented front seven in this league, but those run numbers have been really good with the exception of Florida. Can you just talk about the job Coach Banks is doing and how you guys are getting that done? Yeah, um, uh, defense staff has done a phenomenal job, starting with Coach Banks. Uh, his ability uh, to get buy-in from his players, trust from his players is, is where everything starts in the whole process. But then his ability to be multiple, um, you know, <laughs> with what we're doing on all three levels of the of the defense, from front to, to the alignments in the second level, to our coverages on, on the third level, and being able to incorporate it and teach it in a way where kids understand it and, and can reason it out as things change with what the pictures you're seeing on the offensive side of the football. Sounds easy, it's really difficult. Um, the ability of all of our coaches to be great teachers and uh, to allow our players to understand the fundamentals and technique that we want to play with um, it's, a, it's a unique group over there on the defense side of the ball. They've done a phenomenal job, starting with, with Coach Banks, but to the assistant coaches as well. Right here, Josh. Uh, Charles got the star. Samaria McDonald played a lot. Danica Slaughter uh, played a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, how important was it to get those guys a lot of reps in the back end? What did you think about their performance? Uh, great to give them a bunch of reps. Uh, it's got to be next man up at, at any position group, right? Um, you know, I talked about that week one it plays out as the season unfolds and you don't know when it's going to happen. You better be ready to smash your opportunity when it comes. Those two guys have done a really good job uh, with the opportunities that they've gotten. Uh, I thought Nico uh, played you know, seamless throughout the course of the day. Uh, T-Mac did a lot of really positive things on the back end. Um, there's a couple of things that, that he can do better uh, with his eyes. Um, but for young players, uh, I thought there was uh, a lot of positives and a lot of growth. Just it, it's been a couple weeks in a row now where there's been, you know, either a, a, a small breakdown or a big breakdown on special teams, and that's something that wasn't there earlier <coughs> in the year. Is that just the flow of the season? Sometimes you get into a little bit of a rut there, or what can what can get cleaned up there? Doesn't matter, right? There's no asterisks next to a play that said, you know, this is the the third team, you know, kickoff cover guy that's on there. End of the day, uh, we can be better. Um, than we were last Saturday, and we need to be. Uh, for, for us as a program, it's a phase of the game that we have to win. We've shown that we're capable of it. Um, we got to be better. All right, thank you, Coach. <coughs> we're going to do hours up here. So. Guys, have a great afternoon. Thank you. We'll see you all Thursday. Thank you. Thank you.